We're going to continue working over the beat we created in the last video and create a very basic modulated bass line. To start with, let's go up to the Live Device browser and from the Instruments section, drag and drop in an instance of the Operator device. Operator is a fantastic synth with a variety of waveforms, synthesis and flexible routing modulations to choose from. There's also a host of presets you can choose from if you want to start quickly and build something from there. But today we're going to build our own sound from scratch. As this is a beginner tutorial, we won't focus too much on the details of why we're doing what we're doing. We'll cover that in a later video, so don't worry too much if it seems a little confusing. The most important thing with computer music production is experimentation. So once we have our sound, save your project, then go in and mess around with all the settings as much as you can, so you can get a feel for how they alter the sound. If you're lucky enough to have a MIDI device or a keyboard, and you know how to set it up, then you can use that to play in notes. Otherwise, you can make sure that the computer MIDI keyboard switch is activated. This effectively means that you can use the A to L and the Q to P rows to play notes like a keyboard. To shift the keyboard range up or down an octave, press the X and Z keys. Also, if you have a set of monitors or speakers, you might want to turn them up a little bit for this video, as it's often hard to hear sub bass tones at low volume or on headphones. Now that we can hear the sound from Operator, we can start sculpting it with synthesis controls. The first thing to do is to quickly click on the algorithm button, which will take you into what's called the global shell face of Operator. This is where you can change core operations of the synth, including the oscillator modulation routing. That sounds complicated, but here's a basic explanation. This synth has four oscillators. You can think of oscillators as sound generators. An operator not only lets you mix between having only one or all four going at once, but it also lets you run them into each other in different combinations so that the tone shape of one oscillator will alter another and you can get some really interesting sounds and timbres. This section is where you can choose how the oscillators are routed and for the simplest approach, we're going to choose the algorithm which makes oscillator A and B independent and oscillators C and D modulated by the first two. Feel free to come back later and switch up the routing and see what effect it has on your final sound. Now we're going to start layering our oscillators to build a heavy bass sound. Oscillator A is by default set to a sine wave and we're going to leave that how it is as it'll provide a nice rich low sub bass tone for the other sounds to sit on top of. Next we'll click on the level knob for oscillator B and turn it up so that we can hear what it plays. It's also set to sine by default so we're going to move our mouse over to the waveform selection list. Click the drop down menu and select the SAW 16 option. Now we have a sine wave and a sawtooth wave playing together. Finally, we'll turn up the level on oscillator C, choose SAW D, and turn up the level for oscillator D and leave it set to sine. We'll quickly adjust the mix of the levels to find a nice balance between the four oscillators. Now we have a pretty decent bass tone, and we can pencil in a bass line in the same way we did the beat. First we'll create the MIDI clip by selecting our region and pressing Command Shift M. Double click on the MIDI clip header to enter clip mode in the bottom panel, and ensure our loop switch is activated and drag our loop out a few bars. Then we're going to change our grid resolution by pressing Control click or right click if you have a two button mouse, and select eighth note divisions. From here we'll pencil in notes just like the beat, by clicking in the note spaces and adjusting until we come up with something we like.
So we have a baseline which sounds pretty decent, but it's missing a key element, modulation. Modulating, or changing, a sound over time is what gives loop-based music its compositional movement. We're going to go back into the device window by pressing Shift-Tab, and from here activate the filter switch. Modulating the filter cutoff is one of the most common forms of modulation in dubstep, and you can hear already that as we move the button up and down, we've got a pretty convincing wobble bass sound. But we don't want to be doing this by hand for the whole song. Instead, we're going to automate it by using the operator's LFO, which stands for Low Frequency Oscillator. In order to get the LFO to automatically move the cutoff knob, we need to point it in the right direction. If we activate the LFO switch, we'll hear that it's automatically set to modulate the pitch of all oscillators. To deactivate this, we need to turn off the oscillator switches under the section titled Destination A. Then, under the Destination B header, we'll drop down the selection menu and select Filter Frequency. Next, we'll set the LFO's frequency range to time synchronized by dropping down the selector and choosing Sync. This option allows us to sync the modulation to even note intervals ranging from 4 bars per cycle to 1 48th of a bar cycle. We'll also ensure that the LFO amount is set to 100% so that we can really hear its effect. Now, as we adjust the frequency and resonance setting on the filter, you can really hear that classic wobble bass sound. But if we leave it at just one setting for the entire track, it's essentially as static as the previous sound. So in order to add some movement and excitement, we're going to automate the LFO rate so that it changes with the loop. To do that, we're going to click on the rate knob. Doing this will bring up a red line, which runs parallel with your MIDI clip, which is our automation envelope. Ableton's really handy in that way, in that the last thing you click on will activate the automation envelope for that parameter. So if you lose your automation accidentally later, just click on the knob and it should pop back up again. Another way to find automated parameters is the automated control chooser in the track title bar. Any selection with a red dot beside it has some automation associated with it. This can be really helpful if you've automated a lot of parameters on the same device. The first thing we'll do is double click on the envelope at the start of the loop to create our first breakpoint, and then create another one at the start of the second note. These breakpoints act like handles that you can drag up or down, left or right, and as you do so, it alters the selected control over time. In this case, the further up we put the breakpoint, the less the wobble rate. The lower the breakpoint, the faster the rate. Let's add a few more till we get something that sounds decent. Now that we have a moving wobble, let's make it even more interesting by following the same steps with the filter frequency and the resonance. You can spend a lot of time getting your automation just the way you like it, but for now, let's pretend we're happy with that and we want to use it for our track. Now what we're going to do is give each of these automations their own lane in the arrangement, by first selecting the control and then clicking on the little plus sign in the track title bar. Once we've done that for each of the controls we automated, we're going to click in the MIDI clip header to select the clip and note lanes and duplicate it by pressing Command D or Control D if you're using a PC. This will duplicate the clip and the note lanes separately. The benefit of this is, if we want to go in and add some variation to our automation, it will only affect the section we apply it to. Now we have a modulating, wobble bass line with plenty of movement, and we can look at adding some lead sounds and effects. <laughs> 